Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on algorithms. In the last video, we introduced linear programming and how this formalism can be used to describe different optimization problems. In this video, we will look at one method of solving these problems, known as the simplex algorithm. If you enjoy this lecture, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. With that, let's begin. As we explained in our previous video on linear programming, the standard form of a linear program consists of three parts. The objective function, which we aim to maximize in the standard form of a LP, the constraints imposed on our variables which define the convex polytope of our feasible region, and the non-negative variables. As we had shown in the last video, if the feasible region is bounded, the optimal solution for the LP must lie at one of the vertices. However, it is not practical to just naively check every vertex for the optimum, as the number of vertices the polytope has scales unfavorably with the number of variables and constraints. There, hence, we would like to have a smarter way of traversing these vertices. To do this, we can use Danzig's simplex algorithm. The idea behind the simplex algorithm is that if we start at a vertex of the polytope, and this vertex is not optimal, there always exists an edge which connects this vertex to another one that has a more optimal value. Hence, by traveling along the edges in the direction of increasing optimality, we can eventually reach the optimal solution. The basic simplex algorithm works as follows. Taking a LP in standard form, we can redefine it as follows, where the constraints become equalities. We can then use this form to write the following tableau, where the bottom row corresponds to the objective function, and all the other rows refer to constraints. We can think of each column as representing a different variable. Note that here we introduce several artificial variables in addition to those we are actually optimizing over. In particular, note that we introduce one artificial variable z for the objective function, and an additional artificial variable si for each constraint that we have. We then apply the following pivot rule until the bottom row is entirely filled with non-negative elements. Find the element of the lowest value in the bottom row. Divide the last column by the column of this element and find the row with the minimum non-negative ratio. Normalize the element at this row and column to be 1, and then add constant multiples of this row to all others to zero out all other elements in this column. Let's look at an example to see this algorithm in action, to better grasp how it actually works. In particular, let's look at the max flow problem from the last video. We had the following primal linear program. Writing this in tableau form, we have the following. Here we can see that the most negative elements in the bottom row are negative 1. To break the tie, we choose the leftmost column. For the row of the pivot, we can see that the second row has the smallest ratio between the rightmost column and the column of choice. Hence, our pivot is at the second row and first element. Applying the update rule gives us the following. Repeating this process with the new pivot at the fourth row and the second column, we get the following tableau. Since there are no more negative values in the bottom row, we are done. The maximum value of the objective function is simply given by the bottom right element, which is 2.5, the actual max flow. To figure out the actual flow which yields this maximum, we simply look at the two leftmost columns, which correspond to our basic variables. Here, we can see that if we ignore all the artificial variables, we can set fsu to be 1 and fsv to be 1.5. Hence, we have that the solution to our LP is given as follows. If we look at what we were actually doing geometrically, we have that the feasible region is defined as the following polygon, where the x-axis corresponds to FSU and the y-axis to FSV. In the beginning, we started the vertex at the origin, where FSU equals FSV equals 0. After the first pivot, we have that FSU equals 1 and FSV equals 0, meaning that we travel to the vertex directly to the right. And finally, with the second and last pivot, we travel from this point to the optimum at FSU equals 1 and FSV equals 1.5. Five. Note that this method has an important caveat. In particular, we assume that the origin was in our feasible set, and was therefore a vertex by the non-negativity conditions imposed. However, what happens if this is not the case? Well, this brings us to a generalization of the simplex method, the two-phase simplex method. With the two-phase simplex method, the idea is similar to that of the simplex method for canonical tableaus. However, we introduce an additional preliminary step. 
In particular, for phase one, we define our tableau as before, except we check whether the origin satisfies each constraint. For each constraint i, where setting each basic variable to zero does not satisfy the inequality, we add a quantity si minus ti, rather than just si. We then define a new objective function u, which is the sum of all these t variables, where the goal is now to minimize this quantity. Note that we keep the original objective function in this new modified tableau to transform it into the desired form for the second phase of this algorithm. Them. However, we don't actually want to use this row for pivot selection. To minimize u, we now convert it into a maximization problem as follows. We then add every constraint row with t terms to this row to eliminate the non-zero t coefficients. Applying the simplex algorithm from before allows us to minimize u, giving us a valid basic feasible solution. We now perform phase two, where we remove the additional columns for the t variables as well as the row for u. We now have access to a canonical tableau, which we can solve normally using the standard simplex algorithm. Let's look at an example of this process in action to get a better sense of how this actually works. Consider the dual of the max flow problem described earlier, in other words, the equivalent min cut problem. We can restate this as a maximization problem as follows. Note that we also flip all the inequalities in the constraints to upper bounds to get the standard form of a LP. We insert the necessary artificial variables as follows to get the following tableau. Note here that the last row corresponds to a new condition we are optimizing over. Eliminating the elements for the t variables in the line for u by adding the other equations to this line, we have the following tableau. We now apply the pivot rule successively to this tableau until all the negative elements from the u line disappear, except for, of course, the coefficient of u. Once phase one is complete, we get the following tableau. Removing the unnecessary rows and columns, we can see that this tableau corresponds to the vertex 0, 0, 0, 1, which does lie in the feasible region. As it turns out, this tableau is actually already in the most simplified form possible, meaning that it is actually our optimal solution. And we can actually stop phase two here. In other words, z equals 2.5 is the minimum total capacity cut that disconnects the source from the sink, where the cut only crosses edge VT. I will end this section by mentioning that while the simplex algorithm presents a practical optimization and significant speed up over naively checking every vertex of the polytope, the simplex algorithm may still need to traverse every vertex in some pathological cases. Hence, the worst case time complexity of the simplex algorithm is still exponential. There do exist polynomial time algorithms for solving linear programs, however, those are rather sophisticated and are beyond the scope of this video. Altogether, the simplex algorithm is one of many powerful tools for solving linear programs. Using the two-phase simplex algorithm, we can solve even non-canonical problems with this framework. It should be noted that the simplex algorithm itself is not guaranteed to run in polynomial time. Nevertheless, there do exist polytime algorithms for solving linear programs, such as the ellipsoid method and Kermacher's algorithm, which, unlike the simplex algorithm, traverses the interior of the feasible set rather than the boundary, and is consequently known as an interior point method. However, these methods are beyond the scope of this course. This concludes the chapter on linear programming as well as everything I have planned for this lecture series on algorithms. It's possible that I may decide to add more lectures to this series in the future. However, until then, this finally concludes our course on algorithms. I hope you enjoy these videos and thanks for watching.